Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome to night number four of the Global Force Wrestling G1 Climax Festival. And of course, tonight we will see the second set of matches from groups number three and groups number four. So let's have a quick look at the card I've got for set for you this evening. We're going to start things off with a battle royal. We're going to see Hideo Itami, uh, Pentagon Jr., Uha Nation, Johnny Gargano, Kenny Omega, and Loki. Next, we will see Samoa Joe take on Zack Sabre Jr. in a group number four match. We're going to see Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Brian Cage again in a group number four match. We're going to see Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Ricochet, and that's a match from group number three. And then our main event this evening will be Alberto Del Rio or Alberto El Patron taking on Daniel Bryan, and that again is a group number three match. So without further ado, let's get straight into our opening match of the evening. And here we go with our opening match here of night number four. So you see Johnny Gargano there in the ring. Of course, Gargano unsuccessfully challenged Drake Younger for the Global Force Wrestling Junior Heavyweight Championship yesterday. And here he is again this evening in this six-man over-the-top row battle royal. Of course, we've got the former Global Force Wrestling Junior Heavyweight Champion here as well, Kenny Omega. I'm sure he'll be hoping to get another opportunity at that championship, but... Saying that anybody in this ring could really get an opportunity at the uh, at the championship as Hideo Itami has eliminated low key already, and we are down to just five. What a quick elimination there by Hideo Itami, and I must admit, I'm going to apologise outright here. I was supposed to put Hideo Itami into the G1 Climax competition, but I completely forgot. I completely forgot, and I think he was replaced with I don't know. Saying that, the competition we've got is fantastic at the moment, so I'm, I'm not going to say that it's, it's missing Hideo Itami. But uh, Itami was somebody who was supposed to be in there, but I'm sure we can find something great for Itami to do on night number seven, of course. And uh, as I've mentioned, depending on results, uh, we will be having championship matches. Of course, we'll see Brian Cage fight tonight against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Brian Cage won his first match of the competition, so should he win again... Uh, chances are he could be going through. And, uh, of course, he is the Intercontinental Champion. So should Brian Cage lose to Tanahashi this evening, uh, it's going to be against Brian Cage, the odds against him to go through. So uh, we should see him defend that championship. Kazuchika Okada has only picked up one victory out of two matches. So there's an opportunity that he may get knocked out before uh, the semifinals, which would mean that uh, Okada could defend his championship on night number seven, of course, the number one contender who, well, the guy who's been angling for a championship match over the last few weeks is AJ Styles. And we know for definite that AJ Styles has been knocked out of the competition. There's no way he can get ahead of Kota Ibushi now. And that was a fantastic match we saw last night between AJ Styles and Kota Ibushi. Real absolute thriller that was. And um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm absolutely loving this competition at the moment. I must admit, I... Sometimes when I do these long competitions, it becomes quite a drag doing all the extra recordings, especially a seven-day long one. But this one I'm really, really enjoying, and it's uh, it's really been exciting. I hope you guys are feeling the same way. And, of course, we have some more matches for you this evening. The best thing about the match this evening between Tanahashi and Brian Cage, it's a match where both guys picked up victories in the first evening. So that's really going to make it interesting. We know that if one of those guys were to win... Well, essentially, we know whoever loses between Zack Sabre Jr. and Samoa Joe is out. We know that for definite. As Kenny Omega gets eliminated from this match here. And we are down to our final three. Gargano, Nation, and Itami. And also, we know, of course, Ricochet is taking on Alberto El Patron. And again, no, he's not. Ricochet, sorry, he's taking on Shinsuke Nakamura this evening. Ricochet picked up a victory in his first match and Nakamura picked up a loss, so Nakamura desperately needs the victory. Should Nakamura lose, he is definitely out of the competition as well. So, uh, yeah, it's an important night for a lot of guys this evening. Obviously, I'll give you some more stats as we go through, just to try and not throw all these uh, results on you. Now, obviously, it's going to be difficult to keep track of them all. Great teamwork here by Atami and Nation. And this is a team we could see in real life. Uh, possibly, 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 possibly. Of course, um, both guys now working in NXT. Obviously, Uha Nation is now Apollo Crews, and we will be having him in NXT next year in our NXT roster. 
So it looks like Nation and Tommy working together to try and eliminate Gargano. And surely Gargano can't survive this onslaught by these two guys. But Gargano's doing well. No, he's not. No, he holds on. He holds on and rolls back into the ring. Atami had turned on Nation. Hetters there by Atami on Gargano. I will say, guys, I'm, I'm just looking through some of my videos at the moment. I'm only 16 views away. No, I'm not. I'm 26 views away from getting 3,000 on our first episode of Global Force. And that's a big thing for me. As the time is eliminated, we're down to Nation and Gargano. Nation in control here. Will he be able to eliminate Gargano here, the big strong man? No, Gargano holds on. And Gargano's been in fantastic form so far this week. He's won two matches. The only one he's not succeeded in was the championship match yesterday. And we are hoping to do a... I'm thinking a bigger match. I'm thinking like a fatal four-way elimination match on night number seven for that Global Force Wrestling Junior Heavyweight Championship. So I'm wondering whether Gargano should be involved again. Obviously, a victory here would cement his place in there, surely. Big kick to the side of the head there by Uha Nation. I don't think Nation will be involved in the uh, in the Junior Heavyweight Championship. He's got the style correct, but he's just a much bigger and stronger man. Size-wise, it doesn't work at all. Gargano fighting his way back. Catches Nation with that drop kick. And who's going to pick up the victory here in our first match this evening? Night number four. Both of these guys are quality wrestlers and could have been involved in this competition. I'm thinking Gargano, I'm going to boost him up a bit next year. Make him a, a top level wrestler in both Ring of Honor and Global Force Wrestling. He definitely has the ability to... I'm not going to make him the best on the roster, don't get me wrong, but I think he definitely has the ability to um, to main event and even pick up the championship. As Nation again trying to, uh, to usher Gargano out of the ring. A battle of strength here in the corner, and if it's down to pure strength, you'll have to put your money on Uha Nation here. Who's just gently grinding against the knee of Johnny Gargano in the corner. Again, Nation. And this time... Ooh. I thought he was going to try and scoop slam him off there. But Nation with a split leg moonsault on Johnny Gargano. And just showing the agility that I mentioned earlier on this evening. Nation now launching Gargano over the top rope. Gargano holds on. Gargano with a punch to the face of Nation. Nation comes back though and misses the original Inseguri, then flips back with the reverse Inseguri. And both these guys done fantastically well here this evening. Nation again launching Gargano into the corner. And again, just scoop slams him down. And another split leg moonsault. And surely Nation's in enough damage to try and eliminate Gargano here now, surely. Big chop. Great reverse. Inseguri again by Uha Nation. Hurricanrana by Nation as well. And one extra thing I'd like to... I'm not sure. I know um, 2K16 have said they've got different types of matches as Nation... Eliminates Johnny Gargano and Nation victorious here in this six-man over-the-top row battle royal. And one thing I was about to say is I would like to see um, the introduction of a, an over-the-top row match like this, but to have the final two have to finish by pinfall or submission. I know it's a it's a match that's been um, that does exist. I don't think it exists in the debate. The truth, I think it's more of a uh, it's a match that TNA used quite a lot. I think. And over the top row battle royal, but the final two have to finish by pinfall or submission. That's a that's a nice little match I'd like to see. I'd also like to see the return of the three stages of hell. I used to like that match on uh, on I can't remember when the last when it was last on the game, but you should have to say like match one would be a submission match, match two would be extreme rules, and the final four would be a tables match or something like that. I, I used to love that. And it'd be nice to see that back, but we're still waiting for some uh, some details on what's gonna happen on 2K16. I know they've released a few again. Over the last few days, but uh, I'm just looking forward to the game coming out now, just so we can start cracking on with our universe mode. 
not only a new game, but it's going to be a new platform for me as well. So it's going to be even better. And here we go. Big match this one. Both these guys picked up a victory in their first matches. So whoever wins this is going to take a very, very strong lead. They're going to have two falls. Knowing that uh, no matter what happens on night number six, this will be, they would have been involved in a, uh, at least a, um, a buffer match if they lose. Of course, Brian Cage on night number one defeated, or night number two, sorry, defeated the Ring of Honor champion Samoa Joe. That was a big, big result for Brian Cage. And Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Zack Sabre Jr., of course, we will see Zack Sabre Jr. take on Samoa Joe next, I believe it is. I've done that wrong. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Samoa Joe is supposed to be on now. But I put this match on instead. So I hope that's not a problem. I hope you're enjoying this match either way. But next, we'll see Samoa Joe versus Zack Sabre Jr. As I say, it was supposed to be on now. But I've, uh, I've slightly mixed up my organisation. Let's just say that. Tanahashi... Drop toe hold on Brian Cage. And of course, Brian Cage is the current Global Force Wrestling Intercontinental Champion. And Tanahashi is the former Global Force Wrestling Global Champion. So both these guys, no stranger to gold, no stranger to winning things. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to take that experience on here. Not only tonight, but with the rest of this competition. And I'm absolutely loving this competition, as I've said earlier on this evening. Really great to see a chance to, to get all the best wrestlers together and have this sort of competition. I'd love to... I think we might do, if, if we finish the universe mode here in a bit early, we might do a couple of uh, a couple of special events maybe. Maybe we'll do like um, some uh, some super cards and stuff like that maybe. I don't know, I've, I've, I'm pretty sure we're going to be pretty much tied up until 2K16 comes out. But should we finish a bit early, then we might see stuff like a, a super card maybe. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'd love to see some stuff. I'd love to see, um, we could do Rock versus Hogan, stuff like that. I think Rock versus Hogan versus Cena in a triple threat would be, uh, would be an interesting one. The three fan favourites of their eras. And then obviously Austin versus Punk versus Bret Hart, maybe. Or, I don't know, it's going to be an interesting one. That's the sort of thing I like to do on 2K16. The first weekend it comes out, we're going to be doing some matches like that. And I will be trying to download guys like uh, Tanahashi and Okada to... To have these opening matches over that first weekend as well. Depending on how quickly these guys get uploaded onto the community creations. Because I know there's some absolute fantastic core creators out there. There really are. Some of the people that I look at some of these wrestlers they create. And I'm just absolutely amazed how they can just create something it's so perfect. Both these guys are very, very good as well. I had Brian Cage last year and it wasn't a very good core. But this year is a fantastic one. It's Brian Cage with a powerbomb. Holds on to Tanahashi and brings him back up for a second powerbomb. And again, Cage brings Tanahashi up for a third powerbomb. The triple powerbomb by Brian Cage on Tanahashi. And with that sort of offense, that could be all here this evening. One, two, no near two count. Tanahashi kicks out. And Brian Cage brings him across towards the ropes. And Tanahashi just ejects. Brian Cage over the top rope. Cage hits that matting very, very hard. And Tanahashi takes a few seconds in the ring to regain his composure. Then comes back out to join Brian Cage. Throws him into the ring. Stomped to the back, but Cage is back up to his feet. Comes plowing towards Tanahashi, who catches him with a drop toe hold. And now just stomping the knee into the mat as well of Brian Cage. Cage again back up to his feet, though. You can't keep the big man down for long. Tanahashi with a drop kick and... It's going to take something special to keep the big man down for a free count here this evening. Belly to belly suplex by Brian Cage on Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now Cage out on the outside. Went for that springboard splash, but Tanahashi avoids it. And Cage lands and crashes and burns in the middle of the ring. Tanahashi tries to, tries to take advantage of that, but gets caught by a German suplex by Brian Cage. Cage on the knee to the stomach, and there's the discus larry by Brian Cage. We've seen him finish many a match like this. And could he finish this match here? One, two, and three. And Brian Cage 
picks up his second victory of the week. And he is going to take a great advantage into this now. Let me mark this down on my little score sheet here. Brian Cage with two victories. Hiroshi Tanahashi with one victory. And of course, Zack Sabre Jr. Samoa Joe both currently without a victory, but they will face each other next. Whoever loses our next match is definitely out of the competition. Whoever wins is still in with a slight, slight chance. Of course, on night number six, we have Tanahashi versus Samoa Joe. And we have Zack Sabre Jr. versus Brian Cage. Great win here for Brian Cage. I have my money on Hiroshi Tanahashi. I'm not going to lie. And the way this is looking, maybe we should have Brian Cage defend his Intercontinental Championship on Global Force Wrestling TV the week after this pay-per-view because uh, it's looking like Brian Cage could go through here. I'm starting to see a, uh, a pattern emerging in all of the groups. We have one guy with two wins, two guys with one win, and one guy with nothing at the moment. And here we go in this vital match for these two. Whoever loses this match is definitely out of this competition. Samoa Joe, the current Ring of Honor champion. Zack Sabre Jr., probably one of the most technically gifted wrestlers in the world. Has not really done too well in this universe, but I've so brought him in. I must admit, I've given him many of opportunity, and he's not really given me anything back as yet. Which is a shame, because like I say, he's one of my favourite wrestlers. And if you watch a lot of his work with Pro Wrestling Gorilla, you can see why. He's been absolutely fantastic. As Joe with a, a second backdrop. And he's you see, he's just letting go of Zack Sabre Jr. And launching him across the ring. And Joe with a huge strength advantage here against Zack Sabre Jr. But Zack, a lot of agility and some fantastic technical wrestling ability as well on show. Hopefully, anyway. And this is going to be a complete squash match for, for Samoa Joe. Which is highly possible knowing Samoa Joe. Again, whoever loses this match is com is out, basically. They're done and dusted. And should Brian Cage should Brian Cage lose his match against Zack Sabre Jr. on night number four? There's many different... Pos I'm not even going to go into the possibilities because there's just too many possibilities of what could happen. If Brian Cage loses, then the likes of Tanahashi, Zack Sabre Jr., Samoa Joe could all be involved. There's a, there's a possibility still where we could end up with a triple threat buffer match on night number six for group four. And that would be if Zack Sabre Jr. wins here this evening. Zack Sabre Jr. beats Brian Cage and Tanahashi to beat Samoa Joe as well. That, that would lead us to a triple threat match. But again, I'm not going to get too much into it. Obviously, I've got all the the, the uh, statistics in front of me, so it's easy for me to say it. But saying it to you guys, it's probably bloody confusing when all you can do is hear it for you speakers. So we'll get into it when it happens, of course. Remember, tomorrow night we have the final matches from group number one and group number two. So as of tomorrow night, we will know one of our semi-final matches. Tomorrow night we have Shinsuke... No, we don't. We have Kazuchika Okada taking on CM Punk. And that's a vital match, that, because Punk has two victories. Okada has one. Uh, should Punk win that, he's guaranteed to be through. Uh, we also have Rey Mysterio taking on Michael Elgin. That's the same group. We're going to have Kota Ibushi taking on Sami Zayn. And again, Kota Ibushi with two victories. Sami Zayn, uh, should he lose that, Ibushi would be guaranteed to go through. Uh, we also have for you uh, Phoenix versus AJ Styles. So Phoenix has a victory and AJ Styles has no victories at all so far. Complete surprise. That is underperformer for me in this competition. Has to be AJ Styles. So far anyway. Should AJ Styles lose against Phoenix, he would have gone through three matches with no victories, and that's a terrible result for the uh, for the Bullet Club leader. I say it's a terrible result, but should Okada not qualify for the semi-finals, which uh, the odds are against him at the moment, he has to beat CM Punk twice, at least on uh, night number five. To again, I'm not going to go through to the uh, the nitty gritty of it, but we will go through it if it happens. But Okada would need to beat CM Punk twice on night number five. To get him through to the semis. Should that not happen. Then it looks like Okada versus AJ Styles. For the global championship on night number 7. Is a distinct possibility. Back elbow there by Zack Sabre Jr. Samoa Joe looked a bit dazed. But now launches Jr. over the top rope. 
And again, Samoa Joe won't be in Ring of Honor next year or Global Force. He will be wrestling solely for NXT. As Zack Sabre Jr. with that beautiful dragon suplex. We've seen him pick up victories with that move in the, in the, uh, in the past. And now Zach lining up Samoa Joe in that corner piece of the barrier. And Zack Sabre Jr. spears Samoa Joe through the barriers here. And that's got to be a, a clever move there for by Zack Sabre Jr. Knowing to defeat somebody like Samoa Joe, you've really got to really damage him. You've really got to take him out, if anything. Joe's back up to his feet, but the damage has been done. Can Zack capitalize on this damage? Joe catches him with that front chance and then an uppercut. And it looks like Zach has not been able to capitalize on the damage done by spearing Samoa Joe through that corner of the barrier. If anything, Joe looks more riled up here. Joe with a chop and Zach gets around the back of Joe. Russian leg sweep by Zack Sabre Jr. on Samoa Joe. And I just slamming the arm into the mat and Zach has really got a Got a build up on the damage he's already done here this evening. Big boots to the stomach there by Samoa Joe. Zach looks a bit out of it and Joe catches him in that rear naked choke hold that could clean the clean the clutch. I can't even say it. In for the pin goes Joe. One, two. Only a two count. Remember, whoever wins this match is gonna hold a little bit of hope of getting in to that semi-final still. Samoa Joe locked in the snapmare. But it was only for a rope break on the submission hold. Followed it up. Zack Sabre Jr. twists the arm. But Samoa Joe breaks himself free. And shoulder blocks Zack Sabre Jr. down. Now rolls him over. And he's going to lock in the camel clutch. And Samoa Joe's really going submission style here. Against the guy who could consider himself as a submission specialist. Zack Sabre Jr. He's really uh, one of the strongest submission wrestlers in the world. Zack with a back elbow by... On Samoa Joe, really uh, vicious in the face. Hip toss by Zach. Makes way up onto the top row. What's he going to go for here? Oh, Samoa Joe catches him though. And now Joe up on the top rope. This is going to be a terrible thing for Zach Sabre Jr. He gets hit with the superplex. Samoa Joe straight into the pin. Could this be all? One, two, and it is. Samoa Joe takes advantage of Zack Sabre Jr.'s poor ring positioning. Catches him with a superplex. And that was enough to finish this match off here this evening. Samoa Joe still holds hope of going through to our semi-final. Zack Sabre Jr., unfortunately, no matter what happens on night number six, is out of this competition now. There was the uh, rear naked chokehold. In for the pin, only for a two count though. And it was a superplex into the pin, which finally got Samoa Joe his free count and gets him the victory. That's one win out of two here for Samoa Joe. He's only lost to Brian Cage, who's currently in the lead in this group. And as I say, this is still going down to night number six. Anybody could still go through. Like I said, there's still the possibility of a... No, there's not, is there? No, there's not. There's still the possibility that we're going to have to have a buffer match on uh, night number six. If Samoa Joe or Tanahashi... Well, either Samoa Joe or Tanahashi is going to win. So if Brian Cage does not win his match against Zack Sabre Jr. on night number six, we will have to have a buffer match. So again, be sure to check that out on night number six. And here we go with our um, group number three match. We've got Ricochet who picked up a victory on night number two, which of course was Tuesday... So I've just realised they keep calling it night one, night two, night three. That's how I've got it missed out on my, uh, on my sheet. Night number two was Tuesday. Night number six, which I keep referring to, will be uploaded on Saturday. Uh, so yeah, Ricochet picked up a victory against Daniel Bryan in our main event of, uh, of Tuesday night's uh, second day of the G1 Climax Festival. And uh, Shinsuke Nakamura was on the losing end of a match against Alberto El Patron again on Tuesday, which was night number two. So... Uh, it's important here for Nakamura to get a victory and get back on track. And again, should Nakamura lose here this evening, he is definitely out of this competition. You're going to need at least two victories to get yourself through in this competition out of three. 
Uh, Ricochet already has won a victory here. He's definitely going to put him in a great uh, place, knowing that he has to still face Alberto El Patron on night number six off Saturday. Should uh, Ricochet and El Patron both win here this evening? Of course, El Patron takes on Daniel Bryan next. Should they both win, then uh, the match on night number six will be to decide who goes through to the semi-finals. I think tomorrow night as well, we'll have to find out who is going to be our number one contender for the Tag Team Championships. That's an important one. Who will face off against the Killer Elite Squad? Uh, I'm thinking... I don't know who, actually. Maybe Jado and Gido. And uh, I would like to put Cage and Elgin, but obviously uh, Brian, uh, Michael Elgin is going to be in action tomorrow against Rey Mysterio. So it's going to be an interesting one. We'll have to, we'll have to play it by ear, see, see what goes on. See who's free, see who's available. Even make up a tag team if we need to be. Big kick to the inside of the leg there by Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm trying to avoid using guys like the Young Bucks and uh, and South African Pride and people like that now in the tag team division. Considering we are going to have the junior heavyweight tag team division. Probably going to try and make that video next week. Since next week is... We're back to a basic week, which is great for me. We're back to a basic week. I think we're on Night of Champions for WWE next week. So, uh... It's just one episode a day, and uh, surely on the Saturday I can knock out an extra, uh, knock out an extra episode for you. As Ricochet is doing very well here against Nakamura, taking some control here as Ricochet. Of course, Ricochet, not a normal wrestler of Global Force Wrestling. He is here uh, representing Combat Zone Wrestling. Next year, Ricochet will be a permanent member of Global Force, and. Uh, Maybe here and there we'll see him in Ring of Honor as well. Of course, and I know I know I call them Ring of Honor, I call them Global Force, but for me, Ring of Honor is my indie show. It's where we see pro wrestling guerrilla events and wrestlers. We'll see Shikara events and wrestlers and uh, so forth. And Global Force Wrestling is essentially the rest of the world. We'll see British wrestlers, we'll see Mexican wrestlers, uh, Japanese wrestlers or anybody around the world. One of, one of my favourite wrestlers is Tommy End and he's Dutch. Tommy End is an amazing wrestler. He really is. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing everyone and of course we'll be using lots of different types of uh, events as well. And uh, we'll be using some of the same ones as this year. Of course, Global Force is probably going to be one of my bigger shows again because a lot of the pay-per-views do take a lot of time. I think uh, we're up to... I think by the time we finish this G1 Climax we're going to be over 30 episodes on Global Force, whereas on stuff like Retro, I think we're still in about 18, 19, I think. Nakamura now tries to catch a hold of Ricochet, but Ricochet fights back. And we're going to do some more stuff next year. It's one thing that was mentioned, I think, by Jay a few weeks back. I think it was a conversation we had where we thought about doing the... Maybe we could do that on night number seven. Oh, yes, we can do that. Yeah, well, I suppose we can... Sorry, I'm, I'm just having a conversation with myself. Just ignore me for a second. It looks like Brian Cage is going to be going through to the semi-finals unless some it... I was saying that, it's a, it's a very good opportunity that he might not go through. We are going to be looking to do a... a ladder match for the King of the Mountain Championship. And basically, the King of the Mountain Championship in Global Force Wrestling is going to be the same as the Money in the Bank briefcase, essentially, in WWE. So people will fight for the championship, but at any point in time, you can cash that championship in for an opportunity at the global championships. So that's going to be something that we will hopefully bring in before the end of this universe mode. We've still got another eight weeks' worth of episodes left in this universe mode. And, of course, um, not only that, but we will be bringing it into 2K16, as well as Nakamura's lining up Ricochet... Strong style knee by Nakamura on Ricochet and this could blow this group completely open should Nakamura get the pin. He's, he's gone. He's not gone for the pin. He did not go for the pin. He brings Ricochet back to his feet and Ricochet fighting him off. <coughs> Poor decision making there by Nakamura. Should have gone for the pin after the strong style knee. And now Ricochet is really starting to build some more momentum up. Nakamura tripping Ricochet with the elbow drop to the knee as well. Ricochet rolls out the way. Went for the drop kick, but Nakamura catches him with a tilt-a-whirl slam. 
big boot to the stomach there by Nakamura. And a fall away slam by Nakamura as well, launching Ricochet halfway across the ring. Rolling Ricochet over now, just stamping on the back of the arm. And I'm surprised here that Nakamura did not go for the pin after the strong style knee. Ricochet comes back with that beautiful tilt well neck breaker now slamming the arm of, of Nakamura down into the ring as well. Remember, if Nakamura loses here, he will definitely be out of this competition. There is no way that, no matter what happens on night number six or Saturday, there's no way that Nakamura could come back. And one thing that will happen on uh, on Saturday, no matter what happens here this evening, we're going to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan, and that is a match. That is the that is one of the dream matches around the entire world. That is, I tell you. Maybe that's something I could do next week as well. Maybe not because it's WWE pay per view. I'm I'm thinking of maybe doing a, a surprise Beast of the East pay per view. Maybe I could knock out a, a surprise Elimination Chamber pay per view as well at some point. I like them. I like both of those ideas actually. Might get the championship away from Cena for a bit. Ricochet, a big boot to the side of the head of Nakamura. Nakamura goes down. Ricochet with a pin. One, two. And three, that's it. Nakamura is out of this competition. We will still see him wrestle Daniel Bryan on night number six. But Ricochet picks up his second victory. And again, all these groups have worked out exactly the same. Someone's got two victories. The other two people have got one. And uh, yeah, one person's going to have zero. Who will it be? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. No, sorry. I may be wrong. We're going to see Alberto El Patron versus Daniel Bryan next. Should El Patron win, then Daniel Bryan will officially be knocked out of the competition. And our um, night number six match between El Patron and Ricochet will be to decide who goes through. Should Daniel Bryan win, uh, that match completely just blows everything out of the water. Anything can happen. Great win here for Ricochet. He's picked up two victories and two now. Defeated Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke Nakamura. He only has Alberto El Patron left. And this could be the week of Ricochet. Ricochet has never, not really not really hit the ground running so far in this universe mode. But this could really be his opportunity. Remember, whoever wins the universe mode... Whoever wins the universe mode? Whoever wins this uh, G1 Climax Festival will get a championship shot. More than likely at our finale pay-per-view in eight weeks' time. And could that be Ricochet? And here we go with our main event here this evening. Again, a big match here. Should Daniel Bryan lose, he will be out of this competition. Uh, should El Patron win, then it's between him and Ricochet on night number six or Saturday to see who goes through to the semi-finals on the Sunday. But if Daniel Bryan should win, it completely throws this completely open for night number six. Of course, we have that fantastic match on Saturday. As Nakamura takes on Daniel Bryan and Alberto Del Rio takes on Ricochet. So two matches that are probably a very high quality. We've seen Del Rio face off against Ricochet now a couple of times in... Uh, well, have we? I don't know if we have. I've been watching Lutra and I can't remember if the life now if we've seen El Patron take on Prince Puma. I can't... I don't know. Tell the truth, uh, Lutra Underground finished about four months ago now, and I'm still got about four episodes, five episodes to watch. So I'm a little bit behind, I'm not going to lie. Daniel Bryan twisting the arm of El Patron here, now just arm breaker as well, working towards the... Uh, again, both of these guys use submission, submission holds for the finishers. Daniel Bryan, of course, with the label lock, and Alberto El Patron with the arm bar. So what are we going to see here this evening? What... Submission is going to come up trumps. And I'm hoping this match doesn't last for too long because uh, the May United game kicks off in 10 minutes and I really want to watch it. So, <laughs> so hopefully this will be a, uh, a fantastic match but a, a quickly fought match as well. I know you guys don't want to sit here and uh, watch too much. So we're up to 45 minutes on this uh, video. I know obviously you guys won't be at 45 minutes. I've got to cut a lot of the loading screens and bits and bobs like that out. But I'm up to 45 minutes of this video. So it's been quite a long video already. A lot of them are generally finished before now. 
Del Rio with a great kick there. Back elbow by Daniel Bryan on Del Rio. And of course, I have said the finale episode is in eight weeks' time, but that's eight in-game weeks. It will be now. But, uh, of course, we're going to start winding a few of these brands to a close now, so it's going to become a lot quicker. We've only got about two or three weeks left of retro roster, so once that finishes off, that's one less episode a week to make. And then, of course, it's going to be CZW as well is going to finish. That's going to be even less. And so we will get, um, we, I'm hoping we'll get the whole of the universe mode uploaded before 2K16 comes out. Maybe the last finale episode will be uploaded on the, the eve of 2K16, maybe. Uh, like I say, should have finished any earlier. I will do a few extra little uh, shows. Just a few maybe uh, special pay-per-views, just some things to, to tide us over until 2K16 comes out. Boots the Summit by Daniel Bryan. Uh, Boots the Summit by Alberto El Patron. Or Alberto Del Rio. Del Rio gets Daniel Bryan up on his shoulder. And there's a shoulder breaker as well. Big move there. It's going to do some damage to the arm of Daniel Bryan. It's an interesting one, this one. Because not only doing damage to your opponent's arm will help you when you lock your submission in. But it's also going to affect your opponent when they try and lock their submission in. It's going to be less... Less sort of strength they can put on that submission hold. Less leverage. So it's a win-win situation for both these guys, really. Working on their opponent's arm. Headlock here by Del Rio. And now Del Rio just tripping Brian. Landing it flat on his face. Now stamping on the back of his arm as well. A lot of pain, Daniel Bryan there. Del Rio brings him back up to his feet. And now Irish whips him into the corner. Spins him round. And there's a step up into Guri in the corner by... El Patron pulls him into the middle of the ring. Daniel Bryan's back up to his feet. Swiped punch there to Del Rio. Drops him down to the ground. Both guys are staring at each other. And it's finally Daniel Bryan who cracks and joins Del Rio on the outside. Is that going to be a wise thing for Bryan to do? Tilt a well neck breaker by Daniel Bryan on the outside of the ring. Del Rio now throwing Bryan feet first into the ring steps. Both these guys fighting in that corner, and I was wondering whether we might see the same as what we saw in the last match, where Ricochet speared Samoa Joe through that. No, sorry, we didn't see that. We saw Ricochet. No, what do we see? It was earlier on. It was Zack Sabre Jr. spearing Samoa Joe through. That's what it was. I completely missed what just happened because I was staring at my piece of paper again. <laughs> I apologise. And now it looks like we might be seeing that again as Alberto brings Daniel Bryan towards that corner again. Catches him with a tilt well backbreaker on the outside. Now Del Rio throwing Bryan back into the ring. Bryan catches Del Rio as he makes his way back in. But Del Rio reverses launching Brian face first into the mat. And now looks at Del Rio signaling for a cross arm breaker, is it? And it is cross arm breaker. Daniel Bryan well positioned. Is this going to be enough for Del Rio to pick up the victory? If it is, if Daniel Bryan taps, he's officially out of the competition. But he's not going to tap. Del Rio breaks a hold. Daniel Bryan now with the arm drag. Belly to back slam. Slides round. Great collegiate wrestling style there by Del Rio. Now just raking his foot across the face of Daniel Bryan. Punt to the centre of the back. Again bringing him back up to his feet. Gets him up. Looking like he was going to go for another shoulder breaker there. But arm drag by Daniel Bryan. And for all you guys that are watching, you might be able to answer me a question. As Daniel Bryan goes to the pin. One. Only a one count. Today... Uh, which is Wednesday today. Uh, the developers of 2K16 have released a video showing you all of the four faces of Kane, I think it is. So we've got Corporate Kane. We've got um, Old School Kane. I think we've got the um, a recent Masked Kane. And we've got uh, the Brothers of Destruction Kane as well. So we've got four separate Kanes. Do you guys know if they are attires or if they're going to be four separate characters? That's what I want to know. I I'm unsure the way that um, they're going at the moment. I don't honestly know, but 
pin there by Daniel Bryan over a one count. Yeah, I've, I've tried to find out and nobody seems to mention. I know there's... I'm assuming they're going to be four different models because that's the way that 2K normally work. They don't generally do different attires uh, for different generation wrestlers, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping we'll have four separate wrestlers because at the moment we've only got Kane down listed as a one uh, one wrestler on the roster. But again, should we have uh, f four separate Kanes, then that allows us to have four separate Kanes across the universe. Mate, if we've got a retro Kane for the retro roster, we've got an uh, Attitude Kane for the Attitude roster, and of course a current day Kane as well, then it's really going to help us bolster our rosters up even more. Quick roll up by Brian, only for a two count. Del Rio flips over the top. One, two... And Del Rio picks up the free count and Daniel Bryan is out. Daniel Bryan is out and we now know on Saturday we're going to see Alberto El Patron versus Ricochet. The winner of that match is guaranteed to go through to our Sunday pay-per-view in the semi-finals. Of course, we're also going to see on night number six, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan. That match doesn't matter now. There's, there's, no, there's no, no, no reward for that match now. The only reward is the uh, is the happiness of knowing that you haven't finished last in the group. But either way, that's still going to be a fantastic match between Nakamura and Daniel Bryan. Two fantastic styles, which I think will meld together fantastically well. And that's worked out fantastically well for me, because in one minute time, the Man United game kicks off. So that's worked out perfectly timed for me. So I'm going to wrap this one up here and now. Of course, don't forget to check out tomorrow night's episode... We're going to find out who will go through from groups number one and groups number two to our Sunday semi-finals. Uh, we've got some great matches for you as well, so be sure to check that one out. That will be uploaded on Thursday. Uh, yeah, I've been Shabby Gamer. If you do like this video, then like this video, if that makes sense. And of course, if you subscribe, that would help me tremendously. And obviously, you get a buzz every time I upload a video, so it's a win-win situation. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, I'm going. May night games on. Good night, everybody.